Hello and welcome back to Amazing Mind. If you have just joined us, we have as our second guest, Elisa Ruby Bash. Now, Elisa is an MFT practicing in Beverly Hills, California. But if she looks familiar, you have seen her. Let me make sure I get this right. Uh, she is a regular on NBC's Extra, and she's known as an extra life changer. I love that. Oh, Currently, she's on the brand new hit TV show on TLC's, and it's called OMG EMT. Please help me welcome my very special guest, Elisa Ruby Bash. Thank you so much for having me today, Lisa. And I want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. I'm Thank so you so to be much. With your yes, <laughs> thanks. Now, our topic today is how to improve your marriage once you start a family. Elisa, why is it so hard? Well, when you have children, it's almost like a bomb goes off in your life and you spend a couple years trying to put the pieces back together. Um, you know, a lot of couples have this fantasy that after they have kids, everything's going to be picture perfect and so easy. And the reality is it's just not like that. I know because I used to watch shows and see the mom and the dad and the beautiful children. And I did have that idealized vision of what it would be like. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of women are faced with um, postpartum depression after they have children. We hear so much about it. What is postpartum depression? Well, a lot of women, um, you know, there's many, many factors involved, but of course people are not sleeping that well. Um, some people are just naturally predisposed to depression, and we have all the hormones that come into play. Um, so all of that together can create, a, you know, postpartum depression. What are the symptoms? Well, mothers find themselves just unable to bond with their child sometimes. Um, they can be very sad and weepy in bed a lot more than they were before and um, anxious of course and find it very difficult to connect. This would have a huge impact on a marriage. What happens to the partner? Absolutely. Um, in those cases I think women find it very difficult because a lot of times their husbands have these expectations before the child that their wife is going to be a certain kind of mother and then they find that they're not living up to that. So it creates a lot of friction and tension in the marriage. It's interesting that you talked about a lack of bonding. Some of the things I see in my private practice is, I don't know how to say it, but like too much bonding, mm -hmm. where the mom and the child form this almost unbreakable alliance. Absolutely, that also happens a lot. And that's when the attachment is so strong between the mother and the child um, that the father can feel very excluded. Are those the main things that happen uh, that are very hard on a marriage? Those things, of course, are very difficult. Um, you know, one of the hardest things that we're facing is a new issue. A new issue? I thought we've been doing this for 200,000 years. Yes, but it's only been really in the last 50 years or so that we're finding our gender roles changing. Um, you know, the division of labor used to be so defined, and the husband would, would just expect that the wife would take care of the kids all day, he'd come home from work and she'd have dinner ready for him and you know all that is changing and it's very causes resentment on both sides. That makes sense because I don't even know the percentages but more and more moms are also working outside the home and I know my expectations changed of what my husband was supposed to do but his didn't Right. and it caused a lot of friction mm -hmm. and uh, that really is a very strong and, as you said, brand new problem that develops once you, I mean, it's easy when you don't have kids. Right. Why is it so easy when you don't have kids? Well, I mean, I think there's just the extra added stress of the child and, of course, the mother's so exhausted from taking care of the child the whole day that you can't um, do everything. It's just impossible. You can't be expected to then be like a happy wife at the end of the day. and. and uh, breadwinner. Right. There was a commercial that said, I bring home the bacon and then I cook it in the pan and I'm still really romantically receptive um, in the evening and I thought, wow, what a lovely fantasy and a man must have written that commercial. <laughs> when I get home from work, I need a wife. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So now that we know what the problems are, can you give us some very practical solutions? Yes, absolutely. I think the number one solution is to get help. We absolutely have to have help, whether it's family, friends, daycare, a nanny, whatever you can afford, 
we just can't do it all alone. I have to hold your feet to the fire because I know that after the twins, twins, I tell you, and I was working and my husband was working, well, we had his student loans, we had my student loans, we had a mortgage payment that was brand new, we were a young couple, and in addition, Lisa, we had my mom in a nursing home and we were also paying a fairly large portion of that. It didn't feel like there was even a nickel for childcare. It felt like an exorbitant, frivolous um, expense that certainly we would have no part of. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, you know, I believe though that you can't afford not to, because when you think about it, childcare is going to be a lot less expensive than a divorce. True words have never <laughs> been said. <laughs> I have another objection. What's that? Well. These are my kids, I had them. I'm the only one who knows what they need. I'm the only one who does it right. Mm -hmm. And nobody else should take care of my kids but me. Right. I mean, we get a lot of messages out there from the media that tell us that, that we have to do it all on our own. And these images of the super mom, and it's just not realistic. Um, you know, even in the, in the animal world, chimpanzees um, don't take care of their children by themselves. They have grandmothers and aunts and other parts of the their community helping. So you mean it takes not only a troop to raise a child, but a village to raise a child? Yes. Or I guess we should be like the other primates. Yeah. You know, in reality, that does make me feel better about bringing in help. If the chimpanzees do it, <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Another challenge I had uh, with my marriage and with raising kids is oh, there's all kinds of advice out there, and i got to give you an example. I went to a mommy and me on Tuesday, and I went to a mommy and me on Thursday. And on my mommy and me on Tuesday, uh, the instructor said, absolutely, positively, without a doubt, you have to sleep with your child until your child leaves for medical school. Right. <laughs> the other one said, you must sleep train your child, or else your child will never learn how to soothe him or herself, and your child will have sleep disorders until your child leaves for medical school. <laughs> What do you do with all this conflicting advice? I mean, there are just so many experts out there that are going to tell you that whatever you do, it's going to scar your child for life. So, they all told me that. <laughs> absolutely. So at the end of the day, you just have to, to pick whatever resonates for you and stick with it and try to let go of the guilt. We've been doing That's it for a long time. time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I was looking at some of your literature, some of your articles, I came across something that was called the four C's of a diamond relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, as with, well, first of all, diamonds are the strongest substance on earth. So it's great to try to model your relationship after a diamond, which is also the symbol of marriage. Um, we use the four C's to measure the value of a diamond, and they are cut, color, clarity, and carrot. Um, so what I've come up with is a, a theory that we can, or a recipe, I guess you could say, we can follow to help um, our relationships. And the four C's of a diamond relationship are, the first one is commitment. And that means whatever's happening, whatever's going on in your relationship, you are going to stick together and work through it. Really important in our disposable society right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next one is communication, and if it's okay, Lisa, I would like to share a homework assignment with the audience. Only if everybody agrees to do your homework. I'm going to check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what I'd like for you to do when you get back home um, with your partner is to hold their hands, look into their eyes, and first tell them something that you love about them, something that you just absolutely love about them right in this moment have them look at you and repeat it back so you know that they're listening. After that, um, hold their hands and tell them something, an issue that you're having right now in your relationship. And again, have them repeat it back. And then I want you to take a minute and really think, what is something that I can commit to right now that's going to help work on this issue? What can I change? And, and say it out loud to them so they really hear you. Uh, that's the kind of communication that's going to help you get through problems as they come up. I have to clarify, see, something that I'm going to do, mm -hmm. but I'm better at looking at my husband and telling him something that he has to do to make the relationship better. Right. <laughs> that's what we, I'm, I'm better at that too, but mm -hmm. <laughs> this way we're taking responsibility for our road of the street and what we can do, um, I guess our side of the street, what we can do to really to work on the relationship. What are the other two C's? 
The next one is connection. And by that I mean it's really important every single day you have to connect with your partner, both physically and emotionally. And it's important, I mean, even if you just have a couple minutes just to talk and ask them how their day was, give them a hug, hold their hand, whatever it is, we just have to make that connection every day. And the last one? The last one is consideration. And by that, I mean, um, it's those little things that really you remember that keep the marriage strong. And it can be something like picking up a cup of coffee for your, for your partner or um, just doing something little that you know will make them happy. You know, one day my husband got the dry clean. One week my husband got the dry cleaning. I burst into tears. It was one thing I could cross off my list. It meant more than all the diamonds mm -hmm. in the world. Right. You know, it appears we're almost out of time. What's the one thing that you want everybody to take from this discussion today? Really making your marriage as strong and happy as it can be after you have children is a choice. Um, you have to put the work in and you have to take responsibility for it. And you can control that if you do make that choice. I like it. Happiness is a choice. I agree. Well, I want to thank Elisa Ruby Bash for being on my program today. I know that everyone's going to want to get in contact with you and hear about your unique way of doing marriage counseling. How can they get hold of you? Thank you so much. Um, on my website, it's elisarubybash.com. And everybody, be sure to tune in to TLC's OMG EMT. It appears we're out of time for today. Again, I want to thank you for coming on the program and sharing your expertise and wishing me a happy birthday. I want to thank everybody in the studio audience and everybody watching at home. I hope you'll join us next time when we meet more people and continue to explore the amazing mind. Stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up for you on Hypnosis TV. Please help me welcome my very special guest, Elisa Ruby Bash. Thank you so much for having me today, Lisa. And I want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. I'm Thank so you so to much. Be with your yes, thanks. <laughs> now, our topic today is how to improve your marriage once you start a family. Elisa, why is it so hard? Well, when you have the Ruby Bash. Now, Elisa is an MFT practicing in Beverly Hills, California. But if she looks familiar, you have seen her. Let me make sure I get this right. Uh, she is a regular on NBC's Extra, and she's known as an extra life changer. I love that. Oh, Currently, she's on the brand new hit TV show on TLC's, and it's called OMG. I have that idealized vision of what it would be like. Absolutely. You know, a lot of women are faced with um, postpartum depression after they have children. We hear so much about it. What is postpartum depression? Well, a lot of women, um, you know, there's many, many factors involved, but of course people are not sleeping that well. Um, some people are just naturally predisposed to depression, and we have all the Hello and welcome back to Amazing Mind. If you have just joined us, we have as our second guest, Elisa. Children, it's almost like a bomb goes off in your life and you spend <laughs> a couple years trying to put the pieces back together. Um, you know, a lot of couples have this fantasy that after they have kids, everything's gonna be picture perfect and so easy. And the reality is it's just not like that. I know because I used to watch shows and see the mom and the dad and the beautiful children and I did 